we absolutely loved it. Like even some of your narration is I couldn't stop laughing at it because you you just done it so well, especially at the start with Gabriel's lines and all. Even me and him were doubled over laughing at some of them. So where did you grow up? Dublin. Originally. In Dublin. And is yeah. what's the difference between people who come from Dublin and people who come from the rest of Ireland? Everything, really. Everything. The attitude, the accent, the every we're still adjusting down here. Um as opposed to what we would have been like in Dublin. I suppose it's just more fast paced in Dublin compared to everywhere yeah. else. Yeah, typical city kind of attitude. And is there that yeah. kind of is there a bit of bit of needle between the people who live in Dublin and outside Dublin? Well, I was only actually joking about this with one of my friends. Um Dubliners, we have the weirdest way of thinking. Is there's just Dublin and everything outside Dublin is the country. You could be five minutes outside Dublin, it doesn't matter, you're down the country. So anyone will ask you where you are, you're the country. Don't they don't specify where. It's just if you're outside Dublin, you're the country. And if you're up north, you're up north. They don't actually say whereabouts. So you could be <laughs> Belfast, Donegal, wherever, where are you going up north? That's all you get. I'm trying to think of something similar because you know Britain it isn't like that. We've got lots of big towns and cities, um, particularly in the north, you know, with Manchester and Sheffield and Liverpool. And, and then you've got Birmingham and the Midlands and Wolverhampton. And, you know, I lived in New Zealand for a long time and I lived in the, the very near the top of the North Island. And there was a massive suspicion there for anyone who was from Auckland because New Zealand kind of has that it has one big city, Auckland. And there's a few other cities, but they're much smaller. But then anyone who's not from Auckland is like very suspicious of people from Auckland. <laughs> are, are people very suspicious where you live of people from Dublin? No, not really. It's just you get, I suppose, like I said, more city folk. People down here seem to have that, what I would have grown up in, more neighbory feel. Like they have the time to stop and talk to you and everything. Well, in Dublin, you wouldn't know your neighbours. You wouldn't know half of them that even live on your same road. It's just in the car, out of the car, gone, bang, bang, bang. Like, so... Unless you grew up with a lot of people there, nine out of ten times you're not really going to stop and talk to someone. While down here, everyone, even if they don't know you, will stop and say hello. So it's it's really weird for us yeah. anyway. Yeah. And what is the difference with the accent then? It just gets, we're such a small country with such a diverse range of accents. It's unreal. Like even from one end of leash to the next, the accent can be so thick as well that like even I'll be, what did he just say? Like, I'll literally have to turn to my boss if they ask for something because I work in a pharmacy and they'll ask me for something I'll be like what <laughs> like, and I'll have to turn to her and she'll have to decipher it I'm like, I just did not catch that in the slightest wow wow and what sort of stuff I mean you're an author now what sort of stuff were you reading when you were a kid mainly Harry Potter and stuff it which was. is kind of funny if you um if you look at my work now, because it's taken like a, a completely different um, approach, I suppose, to a more adult team compared to what I used to read, like The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and Harry Potter and that kind of stuff is what I used to read. And then I just fell into adult fantasy and that's where I've kind of stayed. Yeah, well, there's, there's you know, the backbone of the, you know, with the magic and... Um you know, and and the villains and all that. There are a lot of similarities, but, but Shattered Steel, we should say, is a very adult book indeed. Yes, definitely. And that only gets worse throughout the series as well. Oh, does it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because that, uh, that was quite interesting. I think you said when, when you accepted my audition that you had worked with someone and for them it was a little too racy. Yes, I did. As I had a girl lined up and she got about 100 pages in. That's roughly where the force kind of racist scene came in. And she's just like, I, I can't even read that. Never mind that. Right? I was like, oh, OK, fair enough. Then if you're not comfortable with it, but OK. <laughs> so when did you start writing? Um, Back in 2016, the end of 2016. So without, you know, putting too fine a point on it, how old were you? Were you a fully grown adult or were you in your teens then? Oh, yeah, no, I was 26. I'd just gone 26. 26. So you, uh, up until 26, you hadn't really written anything seriously? No, no, no. And I always wanted it, but I was always like, mm, I don't think I could ever 
write a full book you know it just seemed very daunting like it was always something that like, like oh I'd love to do but I never actually thought I'd I'd, I'd do it. And what pushed you over the edge what made you do it? I'm um I came out of work actually is um I'm very open about my mental health as I had a bit of a breakdown there back in 2016 and yeah. I came out of work to recover and I had all this free time on my hands because I've been working since I was 17. So all of a sudden I have all this free time. I have nothing to do around the house and I hate not having anything to do. Yeah. So my husband was just like, here, you've been thinking about doing this for a while. Would you not, you know, give it a shot and see what happens? And it actually helped my mental health then as well. And now that one book I worked on, I've five out at the moment and another five being worked on. So, yeah. That was the um the the wrath of Ragnar was it? That was yeah yeah that was that was what started it and then that you know uh, Shattered Steel is actually a prequel to that, isn't it? It is, yeah. And and you found that the the creative process helped you with with the dark times. Yeah, definitely, it was a great outlet for it. Um, again, if you were feeling crappy, you just take it out on some characters, you know that way. <laughs> Let them go on a killing spree because it's frowned upon if you do it yourself. So. Let yeah. them go nuts and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, it is like, frowned upon killing spree. Yeah, it's a much healthier, <laughs> yeah. much healthier way to, to annihilate people in a gruesome way. I think yes, yeah. um, and it sounds like your husband was really supportive there because it's. I, I'm guessing without him saying this is okay, you need to do this. You might never have done it. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have. He did. He gave me the kick up the ass now that I needed to do it, and then he gave me another basically build up the arse that I needed then to to put it out there because even when it was done I was too I suppose anxious I didn't want to put it out there I didn't think any of my work was any good or anyone would like it and he made me put really? it out and I put it out and it's been and it's been accepted well, like well, a lot who, of people who, are... who had read it then when you first did the first one who had read it just you and him just me and him and he made me do it he made me put it out good for him Oh, that's great. It's what you need, isn't it? I mean, I know, you know, I was a long time ago, I was an air conditioning engineer in Sydney, Australia, and I came home from work one day and said to my wife, I said, I've been in the van today. I've had the radio on. That's what I want to do. I don't want to do this. I want to be on the radio. And if she'd have said to me, don't be so silly, wash your hands, your tea's on the table, I would never have done it. But she said, go on then. And that started off, you know, and I've not, I can honestly say, since, you know, it took me about a year to get my first radio job, but since then I haven't worked a day in my life. <laughs> I've just, yeah. you know, talked rubbish on the radio. And more recently, in the, in the last couple of years, I've, I've got into audiobook narration and production. And it's just wonderful because I meet authors from around the world, like yourself, and I work on your work and help and try and do it justice. And I, I, I always see it as a tremendous privilege to be asked to, to, to you know this is somebody's work they've put their heart and soul into it, and i'm just going to read it out loud but you know to be allowed to do that and take it on so thank you very much for allowing me to do that you know you've oh, taken thank it you for doing that. we absolutely loved it like even some of your narration is i couldn't stop laughing at it because you <laughs> you just done it so well especially at the start with gabriel's lines and all even me and him were doubled over laughing at some of them well gabriel is my favorite character in the book it really oh, yeah, is. A... Where do some of the others come from? Can we start with Catherine? Is she? Is there a bit of you in Catherine? Yeah, I'd say so. She's more of. Um, to be honest, I was just sick of reading the same female character over and over again. They were always pretty much the same. Um, they were always very put together. They were always just in the same boxes you'd never really got anyone different so I was looking at it going right well she's from the street so I want her to basically be the type of person you'd find on a council estate in that right. sense like as I call her she'd be like your council estate bestie like she has the foul mouth she has the everything going on there that you'd find if you were kind of growing up in the uh the rougher parts of like a city and all but she's got the good heart then that goes along with it but um, you yeah. never know what's going to come out of her mouth. And that can get her into trouble a lot. And I find that happens to me a lot as well. So I suppose that kind of went into her a bit. Well, it's, a, it's a survival technique with her, I think. I think she, she's had to, from what, from what I got from her, was that she's had to learn to be tough to survive. I mean, yeah. she came from a wolf pack. But she came yeah. from, it wasn't just a wolf pack. It was a wolf pack 
with family issues um, yes. that she came from that she had to overcome. And it was a big, you know, she's got lots of brothers and, and sisters and she had to she had to survive. And I, I really like that about her. And I like the way you wrote that and, and gave it, her that depth so that you could see her motivation that when she gets into, I don't want to give too much away about the book, but when she gets into the fish out of water situation where she's living with some nobles, you can see she's really going to slip up now <laughs> because, you know, the techniques she's learned to survive in the environment she was in were appropriate for the environment she was in, but not so much where she is now. Oh, no, definitely. And I think that's when you really see our male getting her into so much trouble then as well as because at some stage she does try hard, but she just can't keep her mouth shut then. So. Yeah, but she holds her own because deep down she knows she knows what decency is and she knows the difference between right and wrong and she's a very loyal and honorable person and she may be rough around the edges but you know that she's as straight as they come there's yeah. no is no it that's she's she's a great character what about some of the others we mentioned gabriel are there any others that stand out for you i love gabriel i could do him all day uh, he was just great i loved it when he kept coming back you know because he, he did he'd disappear for a few chapters and then he'd come up and oh grace gabe again uh, uh, and here we go are there some others there that stand out for you ethan but i think he doesn't yeah. really shine until the second book but he oh really really yeah he's just he's again if you he's just one of those lovable idiots yeah so yeah way is, um, as i say when people are kind of asking me about characters for me he'd kind of be like down the line in the witcher it's just that lovable idiot who you don't know what he's going to come out with or again what he's going to do so yeah and um, despite the fact that he would be a noble he's he's just a fucking idiot to be honest with you he's just going <laughs> down to the for comic relief and i think everyone kind of has a friend who's kind of like him you know they're just very impulsive and everything's just like ah it'll be grand like you could get arrested and they'd be sitting there going oh well that was fun so that's yeah the kind of person he'd be yeah no i i liked him too he was good and and what i do when i do these books is when a new character appears in the book i have to be able to recreate that character because they may disappear and not even show up you know for literally for hours in an audiobook so i yeah. always record a line in their voice and put it in a folder i've got a google drive folder with uh, that recording so if the name comes up again and i go i need to i need to he's not been in it for i need to go back and just quickly listen to make sure i'm on track and i counted them up this morning do you know how many characters you have in the book oh i'm afraid to even know at this rate do you want to have a guess? I don't know, about 20 odd, easily. 55. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> there's 50, there's 55 characters in there. So I had to do 55 they... different voices and they all had to be different. And uh, yeah. yeah, there's 55 of them. So where does the inspiration come from for 55 characters? Are there your family members in there? Some of them, more so I think in the Ragnall series, I warped some of the, f the family members in there. Orders, I just warped off what I kind of wanted their personalities to be and I just kind of built it up like that. Like it was, I think it's the whole character development with me. I don't plot because every time I plot, my characters go a completely different way. So I just let them lead me when I'm writing. Um. And I kind of developed them as I'm going along more so. And it was the same with even Tristan is, right, he's very angry in that sense. He's that silent broody type, but why is he like that? And then it was just trying to think, right, well, what it's trigger him to become this kind of thing and then think back and then build up the story then from there. So I have the personality I want him to have at the start and then kind of work my way back. Right, right, so Trist Tristan, Tristan, well, once again, I don't want to give too much away, but but Tristan had something pretty catastrophic happen in his not that f too far distant past, actually, before where the, the book is set. So you'd you'd imagined him first, and yeah. then worked backward to work out why he's like that. That's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah, I know most people do it the opposite way around, but I started him off the way when you first meet him when he gets off that horse in the second chapter, then that's the way I pictured him. And then I had to try and think, right, well, what would have made him 
yeah. be that shut off considering when you compare him to his twin when you compare him to how loud and boisterous Gabriel is and he used to be <laughs> like that it's like how do you go yeah. from that to the, the polar opposite then and then work my way back then that way yeah and why did you decide to make Catherine a shapeshifter because you you could have made her just a girl from uh, another from a village or something you know I mean because you work with the 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 fish out of water chick you could have done that but you went you went a whole hog and you made her a wolf why why was that because she's the mother of the car of one of the characters in actually of two of the characters in the ragnall series oh, so okay. Okay. Have to, she doesn't exist in the ragnall books by that stage right um so with those books, I kept getting asked about these people who kept getting mentioned who are no longer there in those books. Yeah. And that's where that one came about then is I had to like create them from that series I already done. Yeah. Um, but because she's the mother of these people and they had the shapeshifter gene that came from their mother, she had to be a shapeshifter. Okay, so, I got you. Yeah. And I just picked a wolf because I figured out of the three things she could turn into a wolf best suit with her personality. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll definitely give you that. And what about the whole scene? And I really liked it was the at the ball with the dancing scene and that to put her in that situation. Where did that idea come from? Were you in a similar situation at some stage? No, no, Jamie, I wouldn't be able to dance. I'd stand on you. Um, <laughs> I think I was watching something like The Labyrinth or something at one stage and I seen that little masquerade scene and then I just went, you know what, that'd actually be kind of fun to throw her into something that elegant and that. Yeah. What I'd be seen as very high end and to throw someone like her into that kind of environment and see what she does. And I worked it off that then. Right. And with the, is, is this the first audio book? You, this is the first one of your books that's been turned into an audio book or is that? Yes, done that it before? is, yeah. Oh, and how did you find the whole process of that? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I thought that was brilliant. Even like you made it so easy then as well. And to listen back on it, to get it all up and running and everything like that as it was brilliant. I wasn't thinking too highly of it when you won backed out on me there the first time because I was too racy. I was thinking, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because the way I work is 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 not a, a lot of people who do them and and I've because I'm because I'm still new at it. I'm only in my second year at audio books, but I found that a lot of people that do it they'll do like the whole book and then turn it into the author and the author will go no change this you said this wrong here whatever and they, they end up so i do it in sections in in two hour sections and that seems to work better did you find that worked better for you because yes, you could keep track of it yeah definitely and i've actually got um two more of my books from the ragnall series after coming out with um one of my voice actors and I keep kind of saying to him Andy can you just do it in sections because otherwise I'm listening to the entire thing and then yeah. I have to kind of correct him but then I have to go back in listen to it again and then probably correct him so then he has to like edit the entire audio book then again yeah and have to listen to the same book again and again so yeah. I think it's easier to do it in sections and go right that's grand now and move on rather yeah, than yeah. listen to 11 12 hours three yeah. four times before it's right yeah oh it's uh it it, it is it is terrific and it's called shattered steel now it is the prequel to the ragnar ones but i went into it cold without knowing about them and i enjoyed it i mean thoroughly enjoyed it all the way through it's got great characters it's a great story and there's lots of surprises along the way i mean there's you know there's the kelpie attack and uh, which I think was the audition piece, wasn't it, as well? Yes, there's, it was, because I wanted to see how someone had told their own with that scene, because I figured, right, if they can narrate that scene, then happy days. Yeah, <laughs> but it is it is just a, just a, just a great adventure, the, the whole thing, as well as all the intimate things about fish out of water, and there's some family um, dynamics in there, which are quite nice as well, and it is great, and... If you want, if you're watching this on YouTube, and you're one of the next 25 people to email me, my email address I'm going to put in the blurb uh, there. In, uh, that's the that's my website, but I'm going to put my email address in the blurb. My email address is on the website as well, but I'm going to put my email address on in the blurb of YouTube there. And if you're one of the next 25 people to email me, I will send you a code so you can download Shattered Steel for free 
for free. There's no catch. And if you like it, it'd be nice if you wrote a nice review for us as well, because those kind of things matter. But there's no pressure. You don't have to. If you'd like a, a free copy, you've made it this far into the interview with Shauna Richmond. Uh, so if you go into the into the blurb, my email address is there. It doesn't say why my email address is there. It's just there. But you've watched the video. You know why. Click on there and just say, hey, am I one of the first 25? And if you're one of the first 25, I'll send you a code. Put in there whether you want USA or UK, whether you're based in the UK or the USA, because I have different codes for, for both countries. But uh, just put it in there. Actually, I, I didn't mention Ireland. What happens there? Do the, uh, do the US ones work in Ireland or the UK ones there the work? The UK ones work in Ireland. UK. So if you're in Ireland, yeah. stick down the UK one and I'll get that and I'll get that to you. If you want to, you've got to be one of the next 25. After the, those 25 are gone, that's it. But if you're one of the first 25, I will send you that code. So that that is great. And, and what's next for you then? Um, I've released Highland Reaper now, so at the moment I'm actually doing a giveaway on my Instagram page. Check that out as well. How do we find you on Instagram? In fact, if you email me the link, I'll put that in the blurb as well and your website. Send me, yeah. send me, yeah, email me, uh, email me some links to, uh, to all your links and I'll put them in the blurb as well when we go on YouTube. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah. But I'm doing a giveaway now for Shattered Steel and for Highland Reaper. So that's book one and book two in the physical copies uh, to oh. one person worldwide. So whoever wants it, the drawer is the 2nd of December. But it's up on my Instagram page. So all they need to do is just ha tag a friend or comment on it. And, and where do interested. we find you on Instagram if someone doesn't want to go to the blurb right now or gets on before I've managed to get it up? What's your Instagram? Well, my handle? handle is literally just Shauna.Richmond. That's it. Okay. And that's on and Instagram. So look, hey, look at, look at all this free stuff we're giving you. So, uh, yeah. Hey, that's great. Shauna, thank you so much. Thanks for selecting me to narrate your great book, Shattered Steel. It is good. I mean, there's some funny bits in it as well. There's some gory bits in it and there's some racy bits in it. But uh, it is a it is a great story. And it's great to finally meet you because this is the first time we've actually spoken. It was all messages before that, wasn't it? It was. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Backwards and forwards over a period of months as we uh, as we put this thing, gradually got this thing right. And uh, I, I, I like it. It's great. It's called Shattered Steel. You can get it from Audible. You can get it from iTunes. You can get it from Amazon. There's the obviously there's the uh, the printed version. There's the um, uh, the e what do you call it? Well. The Kindle, the ebook. Yeah. And now there's an audio book as well. Whichever way you want to get your book, get it. It's called Shattered Steel. And look out for Shauna Richmond because there's more coming from Shauna soon. Good to talk to you. Thanks a lot. You too, Graham. Thank you. The bed is yours for as long as you need it. What about you? Don't worry about me. I'm a big boy. I can look after myself. Rest now. I will have the physician look at that wound in the morrow. Catherine pulls the furs up under her chin. It's nice to have a warm bed to sleep in. What is even nicer is that she does not need to share it with three others. She is used to sharing the beds that her pack seldom come across. Mostly in the winter months, usually she must sleep in a bed with her brother Henry and two sisters, Aideen and Orla. Her mother will be furious with her absence. However, she cannot do much right now, at night and injured. All she can do is rest in this young lord's room and wait until dawn to set out and find her pack. Glancing over to a large camelback settee in front of the fireplace, Theodore picks up a book from an ornately carved side table and reclines on the settee, pulling his cloak over his half-naked body. You can read? she asks, sincerely. Very few in her tribe are literate, and even those that can make out the basics can never read a full book. Theodore peeks up from behind the book. I can he cocks an eyebrow. Are you illiterate? Not exactly. I can read some things, she offers. Lake? Like names of places. On posts and such. Like the tavern back in town. The Red Siren? Theodore nods. The book may look intimidating, but I can assure you, it's no different than reading street signs. Too many words. I won't know them all.
she sighs. What do you do when you come across the name of a place you're not familiar with? We sound it out. Exactly. There's no difference. I can teach you if you like. We won't be round long enough to teach, she admits. Oh, and why's that then? I have to go find my pa a family. She corrects herself immediately, feeling foolish that she almost let herself slip. I see. You were separated, he queries, with genuine concern. Yes. Raids, he presses. That would explain her wounds. Something like that. Then I should help you find them. No need. And fine alone. A lone wolf, he offers. You could say that. The sides of her mouth kick up. If only he knew. Well, wolf or no wolf, I won't have you running around outside the realm without company. Anything could happen to you. We can take care of meself, she snaps. Clearly. Well, I'm going anyway. For my own peace of mind, of course, he declares, quite arrogantly. We don't need your help. Tough. You'll have it regardless. She sits in the bed, glaring at him for a moment, his gaze fixed on hers the entire time. Is he challenging me? No. He does not know what I am. He does not know our ways. You can try to turn me to stone all you want with that glare, but my answer is final, he announces, almost pompously, making her blood boil. Good night. Catherine throws herself onto her side, feeling defeated. Her whole body aches from her wounds. She ran for hours trying to shake the people that stumbled across their camp. Her body feels weighed down. She might as well have an anchor on top of her. Pulling the furs over her head, our soul, she growls. Her eyes sting from the exhaustion. A strange, inebriated sensation washes over her body. She tries to stay alert. Theodore turns a page, causing her to twitch and glance over at him. She cannot see his face. He is laying down with the book held a fraction above his chest. His body is strong yet boyish in appearance. From what she can tell, he is still noticeably young, no more than fourteen, she imagines. Lowering her head onto the goose feather pillow, she is quickly lulled to sleep by the crackling logs in the fire and the young Theodore's rhythmic page-turning.